Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romani here. Welcome back to the YouTube channel on narcissism, narcissistic relationships, healing from narcissistic relationships, and just making sense of them. So here's one I hear. Dr. Romani, tell me why I just can't expose them to the world. Let's take that on. So that's the thing. People say, Doc, I just want to expose them. I'm going to start with I get it, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. So you're watching this, you're in a narcissistic relationship and they've done a number on you. Now the relationship ends, but the world continues to think that they're a cool person, a great guy, a cool gal, just fun and good. That was not your experience after betrayal and invalidation and emotional abuse and manipulation. And the one thing that makes your experience worse is that there is this entire group of folks around them to think they're great. So when you add in there what this relationship did to you and how it hurt you and how it affected you and you see that, you want to expose them, right? You want the world to know the truth about them. You want to blast it wide and loud on social media. You want to share the text messages with the world, the recordings, the abusive rants, all of it. Let's start with the why of it, right? Because the confusion that comes out of narcissistic relationships is the capacity of the narcissistic person to wear multiple masks, a charming and charismatic mask in public, and then their abusive and manipulative and gaslighting mask in private. You've been devastated by the relationship and the world just thinks it's a normal relationship breaking up because they think so well of this person. In fact, they may even look sideways at you. So you feel as though you've entered the twilight zone and above all else, it feels unfair and unjust. Many survivors feel that they're not able to feel or get whole again after these relationships because the narcissistic person was able to come into their life, make a mess, still come out smelling like a rose to the world at large and the person who was in the relationship feels that until the world knows who this person really is, who this narcissistic person really is, it won't feel right. All of this is so normal. Of course, we want the world to know what this person's like. And while this feeling may be most pronounced with narcissistic ex-partners, it may also be there for narcissistic bosses or coworkers or even family members. I mean, there's definitely some news stories out there floating out there now about people who are exposing some high profile folks as narcissistic on the basis of their relationships with them. And I read this, it's actually quite fascinating, but also really heartbreaking to read because just as much as the commentary, the, the comments that the person who's posting this is, is attacking the person who posted it rather than saying, whoa, this person's really narcissistic. So it's a risk. That could feel worse too. So what do you think you're supposed to do? There's no right answer to this. I'm not here to tell you in a directive way what to do. If you do decide to expose someone, a narcissistic person, you have to ask yourself if the risk is worth it to you. Listen, this kind of stuff can result in the threat of lawsuits, employment issues if this relates to a workplace narcissistic relationship. It can impact children if this is a narcissistic co-parent. Narcissistic people do not do well with any form of public exposure or any form of public reveal. So when it happens, if you were to do this, they will come out loud fighting strong. Most often because narcissistic people love frivolous lawsuits, they may approach you that way if they've got the money or the resources for that. And you have to consider what your budget is for legal fees and whatnot. If what you're alleging is true, well, it may, may still be okay legally, but it still may cost you a fair amount of money to attorneys to get there. Then there are your children. If children are involved, the internet is forever and there's no really taking the stuff down. How would it affect them if they found out about it, this exposure, or they know about it? And then there are the employment issues. If what you are saying reflects prior bosses or colleagues, do you work in an industry where this could come back and bite you or put your career in harm's way? The narcissistic person has already done so much harm to you. I hate the thought that they could do more harm because yes, you wanted to expose them, but then it hurts you. Remember, the narcissistic person is likely to fire back themselves and attempt to paint you in a very negative light. 
It is likely to be made up stuff and it could be untrue, but they will say it. And it comes down to what your stomach is for that kind of a battle. For many people, a public exposure is simply not a viable option that they're going to expose the narcissist in a more public forum. But you may be left with a smaller but more relatable issue of how am I supposed to tell the other people in my life who this person really is? What comes to mind to me is a story I'd heard of a woman that her husband had cheated on her multiple times. She, from a place of shame and at the time wanting to protect her children who were still minors and just not, just not wanting to put herself out there in that way, she didn't speak about it. The children grew up and they were themselves getting more and more clear that, um, about their father's behavior being narcissistic. She didn't even say anything. He had well, yet one more affair and that was it for her. So she, had no more, she had no more worries about custody and stuff. But she still didn't say anything. Then her friends started saying to her, what are you thinking with splitting? How bad could your marriage be? We're all a little bored in our marriages. What are you going to do now? Are you going to grow old alone? She slowly found the courage to speak her truth. She's not the one who cheated. He was. And after one too many dinner parties, when people kept looking at her sideways for blowing up a 40 year marriage, because that was the narrative, she said gently to one of them who had taken her aside, and she said in a very dignified ma manner, her husband's, we're going to call her husband John, right? She said, yeah, I left because John was unfaithful five times in our marriage. And most recently, he was unfaithful with the woman who managed one of our rental properties, someone we treated like family. He even asked if she could meet us when we are on vacation and we're checking in on the property. This woman told her friend all of this very calmly. She didn't name names beyond that. She also knew that infidelity was a cardinal sin for this group of folks. Instead of talking about the stuff that really hurt her more over the years, the gaslighting, the manipulation, the invalidation, she stayed focused on the betrayal and on the affair. The friend said, I had no idea. John always sold us this story about how he was always wanting to go on adventures and do things with you and that you wouldn't want to join in. The woman, the one who left the marriage, didn't keep going with the conversation. She simply said, that was my truth. I told you what he did. That's why I left. As you can imagine, word of all that went like wildfire through their friendship network. John heard about it, blew his stack, sent a for a few months and threatening emails to his ex-wife for bad-mouthing him to their friends, told her that he had every right to cheat in a sexless marriage with a washed-up old woman. She ignored the text messages, she ignored the emails, and when he tried to play fast and loose with some financial matters to stick it to her, to, to her she, swall she just swallowed the lawyer's fee and had it taken care of just to avoid dealing with John. But she did expose John. And when I talked to her about it a, a, some time later, she said, you know, it felt, it felt lighter. I merely just talked about what he did rather than who he was, which is really a raging narcissistic sack of you know what. But when I stuck to the what he did of it all, the friend heard it. She was actually a little apologetic and that was that. So what this woman found in essence was that the best form of exposure in her particular world was to tell her story with dignity and without blaming herself. It took her a long time to get there. I'm going to tell you now, I empathize deeply with the desire to have it be known what the narcissist did, to expose them. And as you go through your process of healing, you have to determine what this looks like for you. Who is going to be in the splash zone of your exposure and your revelations? How will that affect them? You have to figure out if you can roll with the financial punches or the time-consuming BS of dealing with their messages and lawyers' letters and all the rest of it. To this day, I got to tell you, I still see some narcissistic folks from my past still get lots of adulation and praise and they walk, walk around thinking they're all that and that they're righteous in their path. By my nature, I'm not an exposer because I'm kind of conflict avoidant. It's just not my way. But gosh, I, sure, I really wish they would get exposed. But I figure that this is for other people who meet these narcissists from my past. They'll figure it out on their own. I got myself away from these folks. That's the only frame of reference that I have. 
But I have to tell you, the irony of this video is I just had the experience of seeing some praise one of these narcissistic folks from my past had just received. And it did not feel good. And there's only one other person, two other people actually out there I, I know, who are aware of how rotten this person is. And I shared the post with her. One of the others is actually the one who shared it with me. And I felt sane. And the only justice I know is that I try to teach people about narcissistic abuse so hopefully other people don't fall into these traps. But I want to reassert that the desire to expose the narcissistic person for what they did to you is a pretty universal experience. Whatever you do, do it, don't do it. Don't judge yourself harshly for whatever decision you make, but be circumspect. I don't want you to get hurt. They've already done enough harm to you. And remember the old adage about the pig in the mud? The pig really does like it. And healing always takes longer when you have to stop to wash off the mud. So you do it right for you. And let me tell you, anytime I see a story of a narcissistic person being exposed, it's a little bit of a guilty pleasure or maybe even not that guilty. Thanks again.